Hello and welcome, this is Israel Lopez and in this video we're going to be talking about Power BI. So what is Power BI? Uh, Power BI is a really kind of a neat uh, analysis platform, I guess is the best way I could call it, or business intelligence platform. Um, it was originally an Excel plugin back in Excel 2013. I had played with it many times before. Um, but I wasn't quite sure how to use it in other um, instances because it was kind of all stuck in Excel. Um, it kind of had to still work within Excel and it was kind of a cumbersome to, to work with. But nowadays it's actually its entirely own platform and solution. You don't have to use Excel along with it. Actually, you don't even have to have Excel installed to work with Power BI. So Power BI is also a desktop and a cloud solution. You've got a desktop designer to design some of the stuff, and then you've got a cloud component to share and publish and stream data um, all without any interaction. But there's some caveats to that, and that's what we got to talk about. It's also comparable to Tableau. Now, I don't think it's a fair comparison right now, but if you're familiar with the um, data analysis or uh, platform Tableau, um, you can kind of get an idea of what Power BI is supposed to do. And the reason why we're talking about Power BI is because it connects to Fishbowl, or I can show you how to do that in our demo. So let's talk about the well, let's talk about what it's good for. I think it's good for quick analytics. And in the animation that I've got here, I'm just going to put something real quick. I'm just this was my first blush at how do I get something going in Power BI? I loaded the query, I wanted to make a graph. Uh, maybe I want to get the heat map of uh, states and things like that, and boom, right there, I've got something to work with. Um, I think it's great for like single user dashboards. Maybe you've got an analyst or somebody internal, and you need to put something real quick together for um, for decision making. And this is what you would be fantastic to use for. But in my opinion, I'm not going to give it the the full shake right now. I still think it's probably only good for basic analysis, and you'll probably find out why when I get to that. Let's talk about the cloud component. Um, the cloud component, uh, PR, PR, PowerBI.com, you, you get an account. As far as I can tell, it's free. I haven't quite figured out the subscription model on this or how Microsoft's going to be making money on it. Um, and that's where you publish your workbooks uh, to your organization, and you're going to be um, updating it in some way and things like that. That's the idea, at least. Unfortunately, though, I haven't figured out how to do the live refresh for Fishbowl um, just yet. The there is a gateway component that make allows you to put publish data in and out of an enterprise environment like a server out to a uh, out to PowerBI.com, and it seems to only work for Microsoft SQL servers. Um, the other way you could have done it is if you wanted to publish uh, uploaded files to Power BI, then you'd drive your analysis off of those files. Again, not the easiest thing because I haven't quite figured out how to make this you know automated, but Unfortunately, that's what it is. Um, we'll be going into that briefly in the demo that I've got. So enough talking about you know theory and things like that. I know you want to see the demo, so let's get right into it. So uh, Power BI comes as a desktop application, and um, it's kind of neat. Um, I think it's a it's got it's a really neat technology uh, inside of it. It's got a, a database engine that allows for in-memory processing of large data sets um, and you don't necessarily and you can load data like files and things like that and kind of mash them together but in this case we're just going to connect to Fishbowl. So let's get started. So we're going to click on the get data option and then it's going to give us a list of our various different data sources. We can work with Excel files, CSV, XML, plain text files and a smattering of uh, database engines. Uh, Interestingly, as omitted from the Excel 2016 video that I made last weekend, there's no Firebird uh, engine database here. But that's not a big problem. We just scroll down the list and we find this ODBC option. Now I, ha I have another video on how to set up ODBC. I'll put that up here on the card so you can click off there, figure out how to set that up, and then come back. Um, next part when you're doing ODBC is you need to set up a data source name. Power BI is really interesting because that's not a um, not a 32-bit application it's a 64-bit application um, I only learned that because when I went through this list my fishbowl data source name was not here on Windows 32-bit applications and 64-bit applications 
have to connect to ODBC drivers separately. They have to be the same. So I have a Fishbowl 64 and then I have a regular Fishbowl one to kind of separate the two and make make sure things actually connect. So I'm going to click on Fishbowl 64. Next, I'm going to go down here to Advanced Options and copy and paste uh, an Excel, uh, SQL statement that I had used previously in another video of some sample uh, sales data. I'm going to click OK. That's going to process. It's going to go out to the Fishbowl database, pull some data out, and make a model for me. So this is the uh, preview. I think this is the first uh, 20, 20 or so rows. So I've got a smattering of sales data, product data, total price, total cost, things like that. Okay, basic stuff. Let's see what we can do with it. Um, Power BI also has a component where you can do some data quality. Maybe your, your source data set is uh, pretty poor and you need to do some analysis to clean that up. Maybe you've got unit to measure issues, things like that, and you, or maybe you've got misspellings, you want to kind of condense things down. Um, so you can use the edit button to edit that data before you bring it in and make that part of your workflow. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to click on load because I'm pretty confident that since I pulled it out of the database, it's clean. Um, you could have uh, an opportunity to adjust the numbers if you wanted to, but I know some people in the past, uh, when I've talked about other uh, analysis projects, even the Excel uh, pivot tables and things like that. They wanted to edit the numbers to, I guess, make it look a certain way um, and see what they can do with that. But anyway, now we've got the data loaded. Uh, what you can see here on the right is the query and then everything that's under that query. Okay, so let's start uh, playing around with it. Let's pull in the, that's exactly as I did before, let's pull in a map. Okay, and what we're going to do is pull the state to the location, build to state to the location and then we're going to make the map a bit bigger and we're going to zoom in. Oop, too far. Okay, so it looks like these are the states that we've got in the Fishbowl database indicating where we have some activity, but they're all the same color. That's not really helpful. Um, so let's pull in uh, total price as the value. It zooms back out a little bit. Now we've got some some depth to this. We've got, we noticed that a lot of sales are happening in Oregon. Some are happening in California and things like that. And here right now, real quick, if I wanted to point out a criticism of Power BI, um, the colors, uh, the default colors are a bit, well, I don't know, I, I'm not really, really too sold on it just yet, but I'm a kind of a visual guy. I kind of feel like I should have better control over the colors or should give better control of the colors in a way that's more expressive. And I'll get to that later. But let's do a bar chart now that we've got uh, some sales. So I think this is a let's do a regular uh, clustered bar chart. Oops. Oh, that's a good option. You can switch it between the map component and a bar chart. But what we're going to do is click off of it, click another one on, and do the same thing. We're going to do build to state as the legend, and we're going to do total price as the value. And then we're going to zoom in a bit. And then I'm going to click on this option. Actually, maybe maybe I need to put that axis. There we go. That's a lot better. That makes more sense. And then I think what I want to do is sort this by total price. There you go. So now we've got some activity. So up the bat, this is where another Another aspect that I think Power BI has it over uh, uh, Tableau is this functionality right here where you can kind of zoom into places as you can kind of click into it. Now, I don't know why TS is there. Maybe that's Germany. Um, some some data quality clean up there from the fishbowl side. But you, you get an idea of what we're trying to uh, come up with. Some of this you'd have to do is set up a dashboard, set up some activities and triggers and things like that. But here you just, the interactions are already kind of uh, set, in, set in the stone. So let's do some more. Let's make this a bit bigger, or smaller, excuse me. And let's put in a table. Oops. Control Z. Table of the same data. So we're going to do build to state and total price. And there you go. So real quick, 
in about nine minutes of me explaining what Power BI is like and making a connection to the Fishbowl database and pulling some data out, we've got what is the beginning of a, of a pretty pretty good dashboard, I think. Um, this was really, really, really fast. Um, if I wanted to uh, drill down and see the data behind it, um, I'm not really quite sure how to do that quite yet. I can only think to do that if you set up your table a certain way, but you can't like right click and say, what's the data behind that? Um, Again, I've been spending about most of the morning trying to figure this out. I'm not going to call myself a Power BI expert. Uh, I know other people will be. But um, trying to figure out what I can do to make this uh, real quick, real easy for my clients. Now, if I go to, this, to the data background, so I see the data behind there. I see the relationships behind there. And so one relationship, nope, I don't re I'm not really sure how I can just right click and say what's behind that number. But, you know, those are the. Those are the things that you kind of have to trade off and can compare, you know, business intelligence solutions. I know this is pretty difficult stuff, but hey, you know, if you wanted to put a map together real quick, here's a way to do it. I would say about uh, three to five years ago, this kind of functionality of putting a map together in about five minutes was really difficult. The, about the only time I f knew how to do it was with the Microsoft um, map solution, the desktop uh, map point and the uh, other option which was Tableau. That Tableau could do it you know, three, five years ago. But now we've got Power BI, no reason why we can't do this. You know, this is, I think this is a fantastic solution. Um, is this a long-term solution platform for uh, heavy, heavy, heavy analytics? No. Um, is this a quick way to represent data and share that with others? Yes. Um, could I probably give this and publish this to my sales staff and make this uh, kind of interactive process? Probably with uh, Power BI, but again, I haven't quite figured that out. I even tried to push this to this particular example before I made a recording to Power BI. Even though I had an account, it still told me that I didn't have an account from within, um, uh, within a Power BI desktop, which is a bit weird. But, uh, you know, it's a new product. Um, it's all free, which kind of makes me a little concerned about the quality of the stuff. I know Microsoft wants to make this into a really pretty, uh, pretty solution for the Microsoft technology, but you know I kind of feel better if I'm paying for it because I because I get uh, I get support, I get uh, uh, somebody to talk to, and some kind of expectations of, of what I'm going to be getting. But anyway, that's those are my first thoughts on Power BI. You might see some more videos. One of the things that I'd like to do in the next, um, I've been talking about it many times before, is to set up a, a real easy ODBC uh, setup tool so that people can go, you know, one, two, three, and they're set up so that they don't have to watch a 15-minute video on how to how to set up ODBC for their uh, system. But anyway, I think that's it. You guys have a great uh, week and have a good day. Thanks. Bye.